Hello, my name is James O'Brien. I'm the Operations Director of iIntro and today, in first of a two-part series, I want to talk to you about the four mistakes that you may be making in your current hiring process with employers. Now, we all make mistakes, we know that, but our job is to mitigate those mistakes and make sure we can be as successful as possible. You see, our job as recruiters isn't just to put people in you know, bums on seats, it's actually to make sure people are placed into the role and actually stay there long term. So what can we do to make sure we can actually get to that success point? Well, what we can do is identify the areas where recruitment goes wrong. So let's look at some of the mistakes that we make. Number one, we have a one-dimensional process. Yeah, you may not like the sound of that, but actually your current recruitment process is often one-dimensional. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it. Most recruitment today is done on a tick box exercise. Yeah? What's the knowledge, skills and experience that's required for this particular role? How do we determine what that is? Well, we take the job description from the employer and we ask some sage questions about the job description, about how much experience they do or don't need and whether they'd consider people with a bit less or a bit more or something slightly different. But what we end up with is essentially a tick box exercise. What do we do? We then go and trawl the databases. You know, we go and search for candidates. We headhunt them. We do all those things. But however we develop our shortlist, we come back and we review the list of requirements from the client, you know, one to ten of the things they want, and does this candidate CV meet all of those requirements? Tick, 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 hallelujah, I've got a great fit. And if you're anything like me, you feel really excited when you've got a good close match uh, from what the client's specification is and your candidate. So it's a great starting point. But ask yourself this, how many times have you had an amazing candidate CV that didn't even get through the first round of interviews? Or an amazing candidate whose CV looks amazing gets through to the second or third interview only to fall down at the last minute. Why did they fall down? Well, you sometimes shrug your shoulders and say, you know, that's life, the candidate must have had an off day. But it actually isn't, there are other factors at force here. And those are the mistakes that you've got to start to look at. So don't consider it just as a tick box exercise. Recruitment is not a one dimensional process. Now, the second area where we can sometimes fall down is by not asking the right questions about who else is in the frame. Yeah? You know, clients, you know, even if they say, oh, I'm dealing with you exclusively, James. Well, rule number one in sales, all clients tell lies. Yeah? Might be, you know, in terms of may not be big lies, but actually they, they will deal with whoever they need to because at the end of the day, they do things for their own reasons. It's their business. So there may be other candidates at, at work there. So they may not really be exclusive. There may be other recruiters. There may be an internal team that maybe you haven't discovered. Or perhaps, and this is one that you should always ask this question is, who are you considering from your internal team for this position? Now, this is a really important question because it's a challenge for the employer and you can actually position yourself as being the good guy here. Yeah, what you can be is you can actually help them eliminate the internal candidate. You've probably heard this process that people get overpromoted. They get promoted to their own level of incompetence because internally they're brought up because they, the employer is scared of losing that individual. What you can do as a consultant to your employer is actually say, give me the internal candidate. Let me benchmark them against the criteria that we are agreeing for this role. And if they're the right person, they should get the job. You should offer them that particular position. But if they're not as good as the external benchmarks, then you have a legitimate reason to let that candidate down, that internal existing employee, you can let them down uh, politely into the, in the process. That positions you as a consultant to your client and you can actually help them with what could be a very tricky situation. So always, always make sure you ask about the internal candidate. Now the next thing, and how often do we hear this? Because sometimes we say, why did the last person leave? And yeah, you'll hear things like, well, it just didn't work our way. We have a very specific way of working in our organisation. Yeah. Well, it's hard to capture that, isn't it? Because it, it's just the way we do things. But you can help employers do that. You can help them. You know, what are the uh, what are the what are the good parts about working for your company? What type of things do you want people to be? What is it to be a person who works your way? Now, one of the ways that we use in our process. Um, is to do, use something that we call KCQs, or key competency questions. These are short questions that we agree with the employer to say, how would you like the response to look from this particular question? Because when we pose these questions to candidates, we give them time to respond, and we get their responses. We can get them on video, or we can get them in writing, or both. 
Um, but we're then able to give the employer, our client, uh, these, not just the CV, yeah, that's the one dimensional approach, actually give them another layer of information, which will actually help them decide, actually, the way they respond to that, that's exactly the way we do it. Or perhaps that's exactly the way we don't do it, um, which may cause you not to actually interview that person or certainly challenge them a bit more deeply. You see many clients, when they do interviewing of candidates, they do what we call coffee shop interviews. They just get the CV or resume, ask all, oh, how, what was your time like at ABC and XYZ? And they don't really delve into information. Here with things like KCQs, you can give them a whole lot of other information, which gives them a much deeper insight into how that candidate thinks. So that's three of the four things. Now, number four, I'm going to talk to you about next week because it's one of my favorite topics. And there's a lot of really uh, you know, clever ways that you can utilize uh, behavioral assessment, psychometric profile in the process. I'm not saying that you're using it wrong today, but I think there's a better way to use it to make it more meaningful to your client. And I'm going to share that with you next week. If you can't wait till next week, please book a consultation with me or one of my colleagues. We'll share with you a bit more about what we do, how I intro can actually help you transform your business and put you in a different light uh, but until next week uh, you know st please stay tuned come back next week for the second installment and we look forward to catching up with you then thanks very much for your time